Before we start today's show, reminder, go ahead and subscribe. Help us reach 23,000 subscribers. It's completely free to hit that button down below. So if you enjoy the content, you're more than welcome to stick around. And if you don't, you're always welcome to unsubscribe since it costs you nothing. Let's talk Jordan Addison on today's show because a handful of viewers hit me up wondering, hey, could the Falcons maybe make a play for the Vikings up and coming young wide receiver? And we're going to talk about it because there are some serious issues going on with Jordan Addison that I hope get resolved off the field because he's very talented on the field, but we have seen a lot of players' careers go down the drain because of off the field issues. If you don't know what I'm talking about, Jordan Addison was arrested under suspicion of DUI on Friday night. Now, everyone is innocent until proven guilty. However, when a highway patrol officer pulls up next to you in your white Rolls Royce, so there's clearly no issue of affording an Uber, um, you were found asleep behind the wheel on a lane of Iowa, uh, on a lane of Interstate 105 near LAX. Like, that's not a good look. That's not good. And to make matters worse, for this to be just a week and change after a teammate of his, Kyrie Jackson, was unfortunately and tragically killed in a car accident involving the other driver being under the influence, that really looks more than just bad. That is just horrible. So for Addison not to learn the lesson of how valuable life is and how important it is to drive safe and to perform these reckless behaviors just a week later after... One of his teammates lost his life due to someone else doing that? Man, I mean, it's hard to have sympathy for a millionaire in a situation like that. So Jordan Addison has some real problems. Like, for him not to learn how valuable and precious life is after his teammates had his life taken away way too early because someone else was driving drunk and then you go out a week later and you're asleep at the wheel on the highway blocking traffic, holding up a lane. I mean, God knows what he was doing to get to that state at 11.30 p.m., by the way. Like, not that it's any better if it happens at 3.30 in the morning, but wasn't even that late in the evening, and you had already gotten yourself to a point where you're asleep at the wheel of your Rolls Royce? Not good. Now, could we see Jordan Addison get traded, whether that's to the Falcons or just outright released? I wouldn't say anything. Uh, I wouldn't rule out any possibility at this moment. Jordan Addison already went ahead and scrubbed the Vikings from his Instagram. So maybe the Minnesota Vikings reached out to him and said, listen, we are beyond pissed and there are going to be serious repercussions. And he responded by having a bit of a hissy fit and deleting the Vikings from his social media. I don't know. I mean, I always think social media um, postings and deletings are way overblown and athletes know that all of us viewers like read too much into it. So they do that just to stir the pot a little bit, but I don't think this is a situation where you are looking to stir the pot. You can stir the pot when you're requesting a trade, not when you are re when you are arrested under suspicion of DUI. So for anyone interested in trading for Jordan Addison, you're going to have a tough time convincing me of this being a good thing for the Atlanta Falcons. Not to mention, by the way, a suspension could very well be coming. Like The NFL is going to look at this and think, wow, we've got a player who not once but twice has had some serious run-ins with the law regarding traffic and driving, like, Last year, he was arrested in July for going over, or cited, I should say, for going 140 miles per hour in a 55-mile-per-hour zone. Now, he said that he was rushing his dog to the vet. I don't think I've ever seen anyone actually say my dog ate my homework to an officer. But whether that's true or not, 140 miles per hour, like, not only is your dog's life in, in danger, but your life and other lives on the road are in danger. But I'm not here to be a driver's ed instructor. I don't know if the Falcons are interested in trading for a player that could very well be serving suspension after giving up some draft pick or some level of currency for him. Now, there's no question that Addison was a very good, productive player as a rookie last year. 114 grabs, like 10 touchdowns. Jordan Addison was the number one threat for this Vikings offense for a good period of time when Justin Jefferson was dealing with an injury. And, of course, Kirk Cousins overlapped with Jordan Addison up until Cousins suffered his Achilles injury. And in that eight-game stretch of playing together, Addison hauled in seven touchdowns, nearly 500 yards as a rookie. And not just a rookie, but as a number two target for a period of time in that eight-game stretch. 
So yeah, there's a lot to like about Jordan Addison's game and his connection with Kirk Cousins and how that would be awesome for this Falcons offense. But I am passing on, on trading for Jordan Addison. I mean, anyone that would put themselves in that situation after a teammate of theirs lost their, lost their life because someone else put themselves in that situation, I've got character concern. And listen, I'm all for second chances. But man, one week later, how, how tone deaf can you be? Like, how can you not just have that sitting, not in the back of your mind, in the front of your mind? I'm all for people screwing up, people getting another chance. I'm not here to cancel someone after one mistake or a mistake they made five, ten years ago by posting or tweeting something stupid. I'm not in that camp. But I'm definitely in the camp of, have some awareness, dude. And I don't think that's something you want to invite into your locker room. Because that shit is contagious. Now, before we move on to the rest of today's video, Jordan Addison was part of a very rare company of rookie wide receivers hauling in 10 touchdowns in their first year in the NFL. So, today's trivia question. Since 2010, six wide receivers have hauled in 10-plus touchdowns as a rookie, Jordan Addison being one of them. Can you name the other five? I know that's very taxing, but I think this is a fun trivia question to maybe send in your group message with your friends. Now, to give you guys a bit of a hint, I put the divisions that they played in when they set or when they were a rookie. So we got one guy in the NFC North, one guy in the AFC North, three guys in the NFC South, and one guy in the NFC East. Let me know if you can name all six of those guys going all the way back to 2010. Now, to put a bow on the Jordan Addison segment for today's show, would you trade for him? Like, put all of your own personal opinion on the matter aside for a second. If we're looking at trade value, if you're really interested in that, like, listen, what would it cost? I think the Vikings would be closer to releasing him than trading him because it may be tough to find a team that wants to sign up for Jordan Addison. But if there is a team interested, like, they're not going to have to spend that much because they know that they have all the leverage since the Vikings are likely going to release him if they can't find a trade partner. So I think you could get Jordan Addison for a fourth or a fifth round pick. Like, as ridiculous as that sounds, that might just be the type of leverage that a team has over the Minnesota Vikings if they know the Vikings want to move on from him, which is absurd. you got a guy coming off 10 touchdowns. He's entering the second year of his NFL career. He looks like a great ascending wideout. So a lot of teams would be foaming at the mouth to get a player like that. Maybe a fourth or fifth is a little bit late. Maybe a third. But I don't think the Vikings are going to get what he's worth, which is a first-round pick. because That's what they used on him, and he has lived up to first-round pick expectations so far. Now, let's switch gears and talk about Kirk Cousins potentially getting disrespected. ESPN polled a bunch of coaches, execs, media members, scouts. Uh, no, no media members, just coaches, execs, and scouts. So, you know, real hard-hitting uh, ball knowers of the NFL and had them rank the top 10 quarterbacks in the NFL. And here were their rankings. So keep in mind, it's not Schefter's rankings. These are coaches, execs, GM, scouts, those guys. They had Mahomes at one, of course. Burrow at two, ahead of Josh Allen and Lamar Jackson. Stafford coming in at five surprised me. Not that I think Stafford could be a top 10 quarterback, but I don't think people think he's the fifth best quarterback in the NFL. Justin Herbert at six. CJ Stroud after one season going all the way up to seven. Aaron Rodgers at eight. Good for Jared Goff. His career looked like it could be coming to an end. He comes in at nine after a really strong year with the Lions helping them get all the way to the NFC Championship game. And then Dak Prescott at number 10. Now, Kirk Cousins, not a part of the top 10. He was an honorable mention, though, in no order at all. Trevor Lawrence, Cousins, Tua Tagovailoa, Jalen Hurts, Jordan Love, and Brock Purdy all getting honorable mentions. And one or two other guys that were left off, like Kyler Murray, also received votes. And one other quarterback who I can't remember at the moment. But here's what one of the voters had to say about Kirk Cousins. He's proven that he can be elite, said an NFL offensive coach who voted Cousins in the top 10. From 21 to now, he's basically been that. The Vikings had no chance without him last year. I do agree that Kirk Cousins over the last three years has been an elite quarterback. And if you do a blind quarterback resume with Kirk Cousins, he's going to be a lot of people's favorites quarterbacks. The guy has gone year after year throwing for over 4,000 yards, nearly putting together three, four straight seasons of 30-plus touchdowns. From a number standpoint, I don't know what more you can get out of Kirk Cousins other than elite-defining play. Now, from a win standpoint and a playoff win standpoint, 
That's been the issue. And that's where you kind of have to come to grips with, listen, you can't put every single loss on a quarterback, but we probably do put too much of it on a quarterback, but there probably should be some level of it placed on a quarterback. I know that may not have made the most amount of sense, but there's a fine balance to wins and losses being attributed to a quarterback, and we probably overemphasize it a hair too much, but there needs to be some level of emphasis placed on wins and losses to how successful quarterbacks can be. Now, before we move on to the rest of this Kirk Cousins portion of the show, if you want to get a Falcons t-shirt and hat combo, go to chatsports.com slash ATL combo. I put that link in the comment section and description of today's video. So if you want to re-up your Falcons wardrobe a little bit going into training camp, use this link because these deals can come and go at Fanatics. And I don't want you to miss out on some awesome savings for the Dirty Birds. As I was saying, Kirk Cousins, like this NFC coach said, look at what he did 2021 and 2022 back-to-back. Not just clearing 4,000 yards. The guy was halfway to 5,000 yards in 2022. 33 touchdowns, 29 touchdowns. Last year, halfway through the season, 18 touchdowns, 5 interceptions. Kirk Cousins in 2023 was having a career year in so many ways. Maybe most impressively, like the completion percentage. Guys, it's not easy to throw for nearly 5,000 yards. There have to be a lot of things that work in your favor. you got to be trailing in the fourth quarter. you got to have a coach that wants to throw the ball a lot. And you got to be good at your job. Like There are a lot of really good quarterbacks that find themselves with comfortable 14-point leads in the fourth quarter, and they run the ball a couple of times, kneel it out, and they don't get all those garbage time throws. So I can see how Kirk Cousins gets big numbers like that if the Vikings are constantly in close games, shootouts, or trailing. But that doesn't mean that you get to complete 70% of your passes. Like You make it to the chance to throw the ball a lot, but to be so accurate with it, like Kirk Cousins was on pace for the best year of his NFL career last season. So I've got Kirk Cousins coming in at number 10. I've got Mahomes at one, Josh Allen at two, Joe Burrow at three, Lamar at four. I'm probably a little bit too high on Brock Purdy, but I don't know what more we need to see from Brock Purdy to know that he's a great quarterback. I understand that everyone watching that disagrees with that is going to be quick to rebuttal with, look at all the weapons he has around him. All right? Did you make that argument for Patrick Mahomes when he had Tyree Kill and Travis Kelsey? No. We recognize Patrick Mahomes is awesome. Why can't Brock Birdie be awesome too? Uh, I've got Herbert at six. I put Stafford at seven. I've got Tua at eight. The guy was the NFL passing leader last year. Like, sure, he's got Tyree Kill, but I think that there should be credit, more credit given to Tua. I'll put Dak at 9. I'm a pretty big Dak hater, but he was really good last year. So I'll eat my words on that one. And then I got Kirk Cousins coming in at 10. So let me know. Is Captain Kirk a top 10 quarterback? Give me a yes or give me a no down below in the comment section. All right, let's revisit our trivia question. Since 2010, and I could actually back it up all the way to since 2000, but I wanted to narrow the search a little bit so you guys aren't thinking of mid-2000s receivers. Six wideouts as a rookie have all been 10 plus touchdowns. One in the NFC North, one in the AFC North, three in the NFC South, and one in the NFC East. Can you name all six with one of them being Jordan Addison, the subject of the first half of today's video? Drum roll, please. We got Jordan Addison last year, Jamar Chase out of the AFC North, Calvin Ridley, Atlanta's own in 2018 out of the NFC South. Odell Beckham Jr. in 2014 as a rookie for the Giants, uh, or as a second-year man, I should say, actually. Um, And then Mike Evans, and then the first Mike Williams. Not the one on the Jets that was with the Chargers for a long time. No, the one that played with the Bucs, had an awesome rookie year, and then quickly fell off the face of the earth. That Mike Williams. So those are the six rookie wide receivers. Before Mike Williams, the last guy to do it, Randy Moss. Uh, I guess they, I guess OBJ and Mike Evans were rookies in 2014. I don't know why I said second year. The whole thing is about them being a rookie. All right. That will do it for us on today's video. Thank you guys so much for tuning in. Enjoy the rest of your day, and we will catch up with you later.